Hello, everyone. We are back today to talk marketing. We've been talking marketing for the last few episodes. We have done a series all about marketing. So first, we we, ha- we gave you some marketing mindset brain teasers. We've talked about TikTok. We've talked about Instagram. We talked about Facebook ads and Facebook groups. And today we're going to dive into a topic that I think a lot of teacherpreneurs avoid. (laughs) And I think that it's, we have to stop avoiding this topic. We have to stop avoiding looking at this because it really, it really is a, um, an important foundational topic that really will inform how we market. What's the topic? Data. So let's get started. So I have been a teacherpreneur who has avoided data for years, years and years and years. I just felt like it wasn't relevant or important, which is ridiculous now that I think think about it. Um, I just, you know, threw products up, up there and just hoped for the best. And, you know, I'll look at my website statistics occasionally, but like actually looking at the numbers and even as a teacher, you know, you give an assessment and you students get, you know, you get information about how, what students can do and what students can't do. And I feel like a roadblock that I've always run into is what do I do with this, these numbers? What the heck do I do with these numbers? Right? My background's numbers here. Um, watch us on YouTube if you want to have some extra entertainment. But I want to know, Jess, you have a best friend who's a data scientist and she's super successful and she actually lives in the Bay Area near me. And I feel like, I don't know, I, you're, you're a, a data expert, I'd say, maybe. What do, you, what do you think? Are you, do you feel like you use your data to inform what you, the, the decisions you make in your business? I don't really think I'm a data expert. <laughs> I'm sure my BFF <laughs> would just be like, oh my gosh, no, you're not. <laughs> But, and she actually moved, she doesn't live in the Bay area. She moved back to Minnesota, but yeah, you're right. Um, She is a data scientist. And so I have always loved data because I've always loved business. I'm a business major. I majored in uh, business finance. That was my undergrad. And I I stand out a little bit in the TPT world because a lot of teachers majored in education and I majored in finance. So I sort of have always looked at numbers differently and having a teachers pay teachers business differently. I've always been obsessed with the sales data and the dashboard on teachers pay teachers and what do all the numbers mean? I feel very comfortable analyzing numbers and thinking about them. And I'm really good at math. I mean, I say that, but like, I'm not really good at math. My BFF has a PhD in astrophysics. And so she took a lot of, a lot of math to get to that level. And then when she was about to get her diploma and graduate, and you know, she's a doctor now of astrophysics, she was looking at potential careers. And it turns out there's actually not a lot of jobs studying the universe. (laughs) You would think there'd be tons since it's a big part of the world, right? Like, it's pretty much everything everywhere, but you can't really just go and get a job in astrophysics. It's a complicated career path and there's not a lot of opportunities. So she started looking at how can I use my education as an astrophysicist? How do I use what I've done to get this doctorate degree? And every everything she researched, all signs pointed to data. It is now the hottest commodity in the world. And data has surpassed the oil industry for how much it's worth. Like all of the information about you is worth a lot more than oil. (laughs) People are willing to pay because companies can use information about you to make all of their decisions 
when they move forward, they need to know about their customer, which we've talked a lot about in this marketing series is really figuring out who your customer is. So anyway, there's a kind of a, there, I think there's like two faces of data, like one being aware that your customer is walking data. There's so many things that you want to learn about them so you can relate to them. So they find your products useful and you can sell more products. But then there's this flip side that you also are walking data and you have data in your business. So it's kind of like two ways of looking at data as like one, you are data and that you have all these facts and figures hiding in your Teachers Pay Teachers dashboard or even like when you look up your blog analytics. I mean, there's so much data about everything you do in the business world. So there's your own data and then there's your customer's data. And I think today we're going to be talking a lot more about your own data and how to look at that a little bit more. And I know, like I said, I'm a finance major, so I love looking at the TPT dashboard and I love analyzing the numbers. One of my favorite things to do is I go and you can, you can arrange your products by like how much money you've made on them. So you can just kind of do a sort, you know, an ascending to descending on the sales that you've made on a product. And then I like to see like what products are making me the most money. But another thing I like to do is I keep a little um, notebook of how long it takes me to make each product. So then I can be like, oh, this product took me 20 hours and I've made $4,000. How much money did I make per hour making that product? So then you really know, like, is this worth your time? The answer is almost always yes. You're almost always making more than any other job by making these products. (laughs) Like even my lowest product probably took me, you know, an hour or two to make, and I've made $200 on it. Do I make $200 teaching in one hour? No, never. I've never made $200 teaching in an hour. So that's one of my favorite things to do. Obviously, there's a lot more to look at. Like, I think the most important little bit would be the conversion rate. Like how often, like when people land on your product, how often do they buy it? That tells you like the the juiciest, chunkiest information. And I think that you're uh, you're a part of this thing called YDP, right, Amanda? And that gives you a lot more information on conversion rates. I'm just guessing. Yes, I guess. yes. Oh I don't know. Gosh. Tell us about it. Your your data playbook. So I am not currently in the classroom right now, and so I'm trying to make up for that income loss. And I found out about your data playbook which is not a course. It's actually, it's a combination of things. It's, it's amazing. And my conversion rates are going up just in the last um, three months. I think I've been four months. I've been a member of your data playbook and it is a membership. And basically there's different tiers. Um, So, and I'm, I think tier three, And I can talk about the different tiers and they're actually opening the doors again next week, October 11th. And so I, I mean, so the, basically what I get because I'm in the data driven tier, I get a whole bunch of tools. They email me all these tools uh, and I get them every week, which is amazing. And these tools, I, I have, um, there, there are different names for them. So I get the performance hub, which lists all of my products. Um, and I can actually filter and see, uh, specific products and all sorts of data related to that specific product. So I can look at like how many page views did that product get? What's my conversion rate? I can look at like the last 60 days, the last 30 days, um, the last over the course of the last year, all time. Um, I can look at how much I've earned. I can, there's graphs that show me, um, you know, like my conversion rate and how it's gone up or down. Uh, It's awesome. So there's the performance hub. There's also uh, this tool called uh, the 8020 tool, which basically it tells you, d- did you know that 
only 20% of the products that you have in your store, uh, let's see, are the ones that actually make you the money. I think that's what, what that's all about, the, the Pareto principle. And so it shows me which products are actually responsible for the most of my income and which products just aren't. So like, for example, I see my in informational writing unit for middle school is responsible for 17% of my income. And then I can also see like, I have multiple products that are responsible for 0% of my income. So <laughs> like they're doing nothing for me. Uh, and so that's a really neat tool. Uh, it also tells me about my customer. It gives me um, basically, I think one of the best things about it though, is that they give me, they give you action steps. They give you uh, strategy plans and they tell you exactly what to do. So like they say, this product, consider lowering, lowering the price or this product you need to look at because they, they give you data about uh, basically, okay, who's viewing your, your cover, right? And, and then, then they go to like, what percent of people view your product and then click the preview. And then what percent of people go from the preview to buying the conversion rate? And so they tell you the specific numbers about that. And so if someone is viewing your product, but not clicking the preview, then there's something wrong with your cover and your thumbnails. So if that rate is really low, you got to fix your cover. So it they tell you specifically, like fix your cover, fix your preview, um, or if they're going to the preview, but not buying. And then so if that number is low, then you need to fix your preview, right? And so it, it's really amazing. And it, it's basically like action steps for, okay, what can I do with these numbers? And they give you this spreadsheet to keep track of the changes that you make. Uh, so I don't know, do you have questions about it? I really have benefited a lot from it. And I know I have because I can see my data and I can see that my conversion rate overall for my whole store is, is on an upward trend. And that's because I've been changing the covers that I need to change. I've been adding previews that I need to add. And they tell you specifically like what to do. They, they're called the strategy plans. Yeah. Well, I guess my, my question is always how much does it come? I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about like the levels of, you know, I know you said that they're, they've added some levels for people to join up because when I first saw it, it was, it was quite an investment, but I saw it like a year ago, I think maybe. Yeah. So there was a lot. I'll explain the different tiers. So they just added a new tier for people who just want to kind of test it out and see if it's for them. And also people who don't really have time to look at all the numbers and all the data. So uh, depending on what tier you purchase, uh, basically the more that you pay, the more data you get, right? And the more, um, the more often you get the data. But every every tier gets a strategy plan. And that is like gold because it basically tells you what to do for each of your products. And they really focus on the, the top 15 products in your store, the, the products that are making you the most money, because if they're already making you money, you're, they're basically teaching you how to optimize to make even more from those products that are already making you some money. Uh, so the, the new tier, the first tier is called the data starter. And I think with the data starter plan, it's $67 a month and you receive the strategy plan. So like what you need to do, and you just can go down the list of like, okay, I need to change this product cover. I need to lower the price of this. I need to drive. Some of the products are doing so well that they recommend driving traffic. So there's the marketing, right? They teach you how which products you need to start marketing more and talking about more on social media. And they also, it's seasonal. So that the strategy plans are based on the season. Um, 
so anyways, so the data starter, they give you the strategy plan. And I think they also give you something called the product conversion matrix, which is really, really cool. Um, and so it's like this graph, uh, you know, the four coordinates. So th they put your products on four different coordinates and depend. So you want your product to be in the, am I getting too technical here? No. It's really neat. <laughs> it's a cool tool. And well, so tell, tell us what the four coordinates are. Like, how do they sort them? Okay. So um, basically they sort them on top performers. So with the coordinate, the coordinate that's on the top right hand corner, I don't remember what the coordinates are called. Do you <laughs> from math class? There's the top performers. So these are the ones that are doing really well. Like, so they have, there's um, PTP percents. So that's preview to purchase. So they tell you how many people are clicking the preview and then purchasing. So, and it tells you the product. So for example, right now I'm looking at my back to school writing product. My PTP is 29%. That's really good. So when they view the preview, they purchase 29% of people that click my preview purchase. And so that's incredible, right? And then there's the uh, view to preview. So they, they see the product, they see everything on the like sales page, right? And then they click the preview. So 36% of people are viewing the product and then clicking the preview button. And then my, my conversion rate is 10%. That's really good. And so it shows that product. It's a little green dot on the product conversion matrix. <clears throat> and then they also show me the products that are horrible, <laughs> that aren't doing really well. And it shows me exactly what the preview to purchase percentage is for those products, the view to preview percentage um, and the conversion rate. So like my, this is really hard to admit, but my top performing product, my informative writing mini lesson unit for middle school teachers is performing very, very poorly. And so right now, and, and it's expensive. Uh, and what I've realized too, is that a lot of my products are too pricey. For people on teachers pay teachers because my average product price is $15 and that's like pretty pricey for products on teachers pay teachers most teacher pay teacher people teachers who are going to search for products are looking for you know cheaper products um so anyways and then it also tells me you know it, it basically puts my prop my top 15 products or to top 25 products on this product conversion matrix and it has them in different quadrants. And so I can see which ones I need to change the cover for, which ones I need to change the preview for, which ones are doing um, really well. Uh, so the data starter plan, I'm pretty sure you get that quarterly. And then you also get the strategy plan. So that's $67 a month. And then there's the data informed plan where you get all of, so you get um, all the data uh, so you get the 80-20 tool, you get the performance hub, you get the growth story, customer trends, top customers, um, your product portfolio, your pricing strategy. I mean, there's so many different tools that they email you. And so for data and form, that's 119 a month. And you get that data every month. And then on, on top of all of this, every single tier, they have office hours, it's so awesome. They have office hours. They have a Facebook group that's very active um, and there's lots of helpful people in there. So even the data starter um, tier gets access to all of that. So they get the office hours, they get the Facebook group. Um, so I don't know. I feel like if anyone's curious about it, that the data starter is a great place to just test it out because it's $67 a month. The data informed, like I said, you get everything, but only once a month. <clears throat> and then I'm in data driven. So I get my data every week. Uh, and then the last one, and that's 149 a month, but you can also pay and save money um, for the whole year. And so that's what I did. So I invested and I'm saying I invested because I, I'm going to make this money back. 
through my conversions going up by making data informed decisions, I'm tracking this. And so I paid 1,788 to be for the whole year. And it was hard to let go of that money. But in my mind, I was like, I am going to make this money back by making data informed decisions with my teachers pay teachers store. So I, I decided I was going to make, you know, pay that amount. And I'm really happy because, you know, I, I just, it's incredible. Like I'm really, I'm not only getting all this data, I'm learning how to run my business because data should be the foundation of like all the decisions you make. And, um, Jarrett, he's the one that's in charge of all of this. He is, you know, I think he's a data scientist. Like he knows a lot about running a business. And, um, and so he's just taught me so much about how vital data is, um, in making decisions about your, your business. Like, what are you going to market? You know, what are you, what changes are you going to make to your products? Things like that. Yeah. What am I going to make? too. Like what kinds of, and also there's lots of things going on right now with TPT search and personalization. And he's like super like informed and like goes to T, he like knows, you know, all the TPT higher ups and has meetings with them and stuff. And so he works really closely with teachers, pay teachers um, in New York. I think he's going there this week or something for an unconference. And so he, he kind of has some in a lot of insider um, information that he shares with us in YDP, which is really cool too, um, about personalized search and what to do and things like that. So I don't know. I think it's, it's awesome. Okay. So here's my million dollar question for you. Uh -huh. You're probably edit this out. <laughs> What? But my question is, so you've had it for how, how long have you been a member for? Like about six, has it been six weeks? Has it been two months? I think it's been four months because I signed up in July. So have you looked to see if you've made more money each month that you've had it? Like, did you make more money in September this year than last year? No. And that, and the reason for, there's many reasons for that. And, you know, I'm going to be totally transparent here. Everyone is losing money right now. Like everyone. And that's another really cool thing is they aggregate all of the members of YDP. They send out per, like member performance data and everyone's down right now. And it's because of our economy. It's because of the state of education. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. And then also this crazy, weird search experimentation that TPT is doing right now. And so I, I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, we have to keep going, even though the economy and like, the things around us are constantly shifting and changing. And so I don't think it's, I don't think because I'm performing not as well compared to last year, it, I don't think it has anything to do with YDP. And I know that YDP is helping me because overall my store's conversion rate is going up. Like there is an upward trajectory. So like there's, I'm my, my conversion rate is going up. Um, in general, overall. Uh, so even though my statistics compared to last year don't look good, I, I mean, this year is a crazy, insane year. And also another thing we've been talking a lot about in the YDP Facebook group is a lot of teachers are no longer buying things on Saturday and Sunday. They're buying things in the middle of the school day. And um and so that's a trend that people are noticing in their, their data. And it's a really, I think, important thing to notice because I think a lot of teachers are not, they're, they're, they're not working over the amount that they should be working, which is, you know, a really good thing. So a lot of teachers are, are setting boundaries, I think, when it comes to what they're spending out of their own pocket, 
the amount of time. And I've noticed that in my own website statistics, like I used to have a lot of traffic on the weekends and my traffic on the weekends has gone way down. And my traffic on Wednesdays is through the roof on my website in the middle of the day. So not only on Teachers Pay Teachers, but also on my own website. So there's trends that are happening that I have no control over. And that's one thing that Jarrett said, like when we're talking about YDP to people who might be interested in times of uncertainty, visibility into your business has never been more important. YDP provides this visibility and clarity so you can focus on what you can control in your business, despite everything else that's going on in our world right now. So that's my answer. <laughs> okay. Well, and we I, tell I all, right? This, this, this is a podcast. We're telling all, so we're not going to edit that out. <laughs> If you insist. Okay. Um, so you're going to put your YDP affiliate code in the show notes, right? In case someone yeah. listening wants to sign up, wants to check it out, um, it will be there. I would kind of like to transition just a little bit to, to the point I think of our show is we do talk a lot about Teachers Pay Teachers, but this is just a really great example of why it's so important to start diversifying your income off of Teachers Pay Teachers because for years, people have been depending on their TPT incomes. And this year for everyone, it's taken a tank, right? It's taken a huge dip, not saying it won't come back, not saying tools like YDP wouldn't help you, but I think a big part of our show is that you can be a teacher entrepreneur and have multiple streams of revenue coming in. You don't have to rely completely on teachers pay teachers. Yeah, I think I think that's that's really an important point. And I think the teachers that are able to quit their jobs and do their business full time often do have multiple streams of revenue, meaning they're making, like you're making money on Shopify, right? I'm making money through my um, Kajabi um, library that I offer teachers um, through webinars. Uh, I did want to mention something going back to YDP. If anyone signs up with my affiliate link, I am offering three coaching sessions to help teachers work through what they need to do with the YDP data and their strategy plans. So I'm, if anyone signs up with my affiliate link, um, I'm going to contact you and I'm offering three um, 45 minute coaching sessions. Yeah. Because I want to start coaching teachers, teachers, uh, sellers and, um, not just teacher pay teacher sellers, but teacher sellers in general. Cause like you said, we do need to start diversifying the places we're making money. Um, but that's just like a bonus. If anyone signs up that I'm going to coach um, three sessions, 45 minutes, anyone who signs up with my affiliate link, because I do make a commission for, um, for anyone who signs up. That's great. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing all of that with us. I think this has been a great episode on data and what it can do for your small business. And just keep in mind that Teachers Pay Teachers is a wonderful resource. It's a wonderful source of income for a lot of people. There's a lot of data that you can use. You can use YDP to help you grow on Teachers Pay Teachers, but there's also other things out there as well. Like I think YDP is a must-have tool now if you want to keep growing your Teachers Pay Teachers store, but start to also think about like, okay, what if this website crashed? What could, what else could I do with the things that I've made and some of my ideas? And I think that's just, it's just something to take away with. And no matter what you do, there's going to be data. There's going to be data on your blog, my Shopify store. I have tons of data, Etsy stores, tons of data, like wherever you go, whenever you're wondering, why am I not making any money? Go and check out your data. One of my favorite pieces of data I get from my Shopify store is how many people abandon their carts. It actually tells me it's like uh, these people put stuff in their carts and they decide they didn't want it. Something changed their mind. Right. So like even something off of teachers pay teachers, like start Googling whatever site you're selling on or 
whatever reasons that you're not making money and then put the word data into your search and you'll start finding experts, blogs, uh, different tools like YDP. You're going to start finding things that help you not only understand the data, but use it to your benefit to make more money. Yeah, totally. And when you say the website crashes, you mean teachers pay teachers, right? <laughs> Yeah. T- yeah. Teachers pay. Te- well, what happens? Like sometimes teachers pay teachers crashes during the monthly it's sales they have or the yearly, the quarterly sales. Nine times out of 10, when I go to buy something, the website's down. Right. Or like what happens if someone were to hijack teachers pay teachers? That's why it's important. <laughs> like don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I think about that for my Shopify store. I'm always like, okay, if Shopify, if my Shopify store just crashed, what would I do? Website, Etsy, eBay, Amazon uh, affiliates, right? Like I'm always thinking of other things just in case because you never know. And that's why the teachers by teachers world can be a little bit, it can be a little bit dicey because so many people are putting everything they have into the stores and it's been successful for so many people, but the world keeps changing. Like you said, like when we first started, everyone was buying stuff on Sundays. Sundays was my biggest sales day. But now, just like what you said, Wednesday, now Tuesdays and Wednesdays are my biggest sales days. And I'm getting tons of sales in the middle of the day. So it's just, things are always changing. And I think you have to grow with your creative ideas and products. You have to be willing to you know, take them outside of maybe what you've been used to if you want to beat the different trends in the market. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I mean, teachers who are full-time in the classroom, I totally understand why they would just throw resources they created for their own classroom up on Teachers Pay Teachers and just kind of cross their fingers and hope that it does, it makes an impact and they make a little bit of pocket cash change. Um, but yeah, I think YDP is more for, um, teachers who are a little bit more, um, serious about making some good money on using teachers pay teachers. But like I said, the data starter plan that actually that tier was added to YDP for teachers who are still in the classroom and teachers pay teachers is kind of a side hustle just to kind of test it out. Um, and I love to help any teachers who are curious about YDP. Um, so yeah, click that affiliate link, go check it out and see what you think. And, you know, as always, you can visit our website and contact us if you have any other questions. Um, if you go to wackyteacherpreneurs.com, you can contact us. And um, if you have any other questions about your data playbook or or this episode. Yeah. Okay, bye everyone.